Okay, NAL Playdate number nine to recap. This is the final Playdate of the stage, and there's a lot to talk about in terms of where things ended up, but I'm going to sort of keep this video snappy. I'm going to talk about that stuff in a separate video, so if any of that stuff is missing, that's probably why. Check out that other video whenever it goes up. First game of the day, Astralis versus Beast Coast. Ended up being a 7-4 for Astralis. Pretty well expected result. They played on Theme Park. This is the second time Astralis played on Theme Park. They also beat Parabellum. 7-3 on the map. Beast Coast hadn't yet played it. Taking a look at the round breakdown here. First round goes to Beast Coast and then two for Astralis. Make it three. And then two more for Beast Coast. Evens up the half three to three. Then we see two for Astralis. One for Beast Coast. Two more for Astralis. Closing out the game 7-4. Community prediction very heavily in favor of Astralis, almost 90%. And, you know, maybe I'd give Beast Coast a little bit more credit. They did pull out a few upset wins this stage. They weren't terrible by any means, but Astralis was an absolute powerhouse. You do have to take into consideration the fact that Astralis were locked in for the Major. They weren't playing for the Major anymore. They were playing to get first place. You do definitely want to get first place. It does improve your seating at the Major and, I mean, bragging rights and all that stuff as well. But you, you do also have to consider maybe they wanted to save some strats because, again, they're going to the Major. But right, they probably really wanted that first place. And Beast Coast, not a ton to play for either. They could only get sixth place or fifth place, but still, I mean, taking down the team that would probably be number one at the end of the stage would have been a nice accolade. So, right, you know, maybe give them a little bit more than 11%, but it was pretty heavily in Astralis' favor, seemingly. So the stats here, Sweater pretty much popped off this game. Nobody else did, especially well on Beast Coast. I suppose Drip, uh, five plants is pretty massive. 3 on entry for Sweater and 2 for Drip here. Probably the only reason they got as many rounds as they did is the fact that Sweater got so many kills, and then, uh, again, also the plants coming out for Drip. Nobody else did very well on Beast Coast. Five kills from Slash, four for Surf, and two for Anthony. I think for the longest time, Anthony and maybe a Surf, two of the players didn't didn't get on the board for, for quite some time, and so it was Sweater getting a lot of those early round wins. And then over on Astralis, pretty good stats across the board, especially from Iconic and DP Fire. If you look at the stat line across the board, it sort of illustrates how favored kills are in terms of determining the rating for for cgg i mean you can just examine what's going on there basically dp fire is better in every regard except for uh he got two fewer kills and i suppose he was in fewer entry engagements he was just worth uh but he was better on entry okay and then j901 shuttle went a little bit positive and then for us a little bit negative but as is what you'd expect from the player playing a hard, hard breach and hard support on defense even though he had a lot of pretty good games this stage all right let's go on to the next game Second game of the day, Mirage versus Parabellum. They play on Oregon. Mirage had been beaten on Oregon by, I think, Astralis. It was a 7-2, one of the many 2-7 losses Mirage suffered this stage. Parabellum had not played on Oregon in the past in uh, CL, that is. They were pretty good on the map, but this stage, I think they permabanded up to this point. Maybe they were saving it for quite a while, thinking they might go to the Major, and now they were confirmed to not go to the Major, so they're pulling out of here. Uh, I mean, why they pulled it out at this particular moment, maybe it just came down to what they wanted to play on Mirage. Whatever, I don't know. They, they decided to save it up until this point and looking at the round breakdown uh parabellum kind of runs away with things they get five rounds in a row this very for or rather the second round here was a big 1v4 clutch coming out of esca so had that not happened a, a 2-4 might have been a little bit more manageable for mirage but then we switch sides after that 1-5 half for mirage and mirage does get the first round here and then parabellum gets one they're already up on the match point mirage gets two to stay alive and then parabellum gets the next round to close it out so one of the one of the more round achieving games from Mirage. They had a lot of two seven losses, and so this is actually one of the, the better round counts that they've had. But I mean, you know, a loss nonetheless. And community prediction, 20% for Mirage, 80% for Parabellum. Neither of these teams were spectacular. Mirage had six points, Parabellum had seven points. I think Parabellum was probably noticeably the better team this stage, but in terms of getting points on the board, they weren't very much better. So maybe that's about right. Maybe I'd give Mirage like a little bit more. I don't know. Okay, and then player stats, Eska on top once again, creators another good game, I think these were the statistically best players for Parabellum a lot of the time, Wimpy, uh, pretty average this stage, not, not too good, not too bad, I think he averaged right around 1.0, and Penguin and Kool-Aid, a little bit lacking, but they still got the dub, and then on Mirage, it is just like in that border game, Thomas and Melted on top, with Marmalade just behind, and Benji and Guerra, or Guerra, however you say it, sort of down here at the bottom, so Mirage never went overtime this stage, I suppose them and Sonics that is true of, and this secures Mirage in last place. All right, so again, more stuff to talk about, but in a future video, so we'll move on to the next game. Third game of the day, Oxygen versus Xset. This ended up being one of the most exciting games of the stage, part partially because they did go to round 15. We don't get very many overtime games in the NAL, and 
even fewer round 15 games so that is big also a little bit of a rivalry between these teams two of the current exit players kino and yaga recently coming over from oxygen very recently and now both of these teams have been very successful this was basically a battle for second place and oxygen ends up winning it this secures some second place and then exit was in third and they end up in fourth after being passed by dark zero so they play on clubhouse both of these teams did have a win on clubhouse they're both solid clubhouse uh, clubhouse teams and so looking at the round breakdown here we have auction taking the first round and then exit get another round or exit get their first round and then four in a row for oxygen so it looks like oxygen is just gonna absolutely smash them clubhouse i think up to this point had been attacker sided after this game because it ends up being very defender sided clubhouse sway swings to being a defender sided map for the stage but again before this i think it was attacker sided so right Oxygen already up 5-1. They get the first round once they switch sides. So if they win the next round or the round after that, then this would be Exet's worst loss of the stage. The only losses they suffered were a 7-8 loss to Astralis pretty recently and then two 3-7 losses in the first week. So this would have been, if this was a 1-7 loss or a 2-7 loss or whatever, it would have been Exet's worst loss. But no, instead, they mount the comeback. They get five rounds in a row. And some of these, it looked like maybe they shouldn't have won. Oxygen was playing weirdly slow. I feel like with newers and vertical, they generally generally play pretty quickly but they got uh, it may, maybe slow is not even the right word they sort of stalled out in some situations and xset made a lot of clutch plays like they came back from a couple 3v5s this game and maybe some other poor looking situations they do push overtime auction gets the first round so they need one of the next two but xset takes the next one and then auction takes that very final round so it came all the way down to the wire i i still think if xset had just won this one round at the end they would have passed oxygen on the board i think they would have tied in terms of points but the tiebreak would have been for exit based on round differential so right it was tense all the way to the end 63 percent of voters in favor of oxygen uh yeah i think this is probably about right both of these teams had been quite excellent this stage with oxygen being perhaps a little bit better they did come into the day higher on the scoreboard and maybe 63 percent is even too generous i think it was pretty close to 50 50 but yeah i'd maybe give a little bit of advantage to auction 60 to 40 about is what i give and that is about what we got so looking at the stats here quite surprising that this went all the way to round 15 it looks like exit suffered a uh, maybe not a massive loss but a pretty pretty big loss i think auction was just extremely dominant in a lot of the rounds that they won and that's of course reflected in the stats nobody going positive on rating for exit only ds i think going positive on kd here and then everyone going positive on rating and kd on auction except for dream pop off game for a vertical just like almost every other game and then finally newer's redeems himself a little bit he was on a little bit of a, a pretty poor streak but a good game coming out from here with the 14 and 8 and then the flawless entry oxygen pretty savage on entry this game you see that they won 12 of the 15 entry engagements i mean that's massive winning 80 percent of the time and it didn't always translate to round wins of course they only won by the one round in round 15 but still they got the w and i guess that'll do it for this game let's go to the next Fourth game of the day, Dark Zero versus Space Station. This was the most important game of the day. This was the only one where teams were still playing for to go to the major. And it is Dark Zero that ends up taking the win. And I mean, you know, it was unfortunate to watch. I'm a big Space Station fan. They're my favorite team. And now to be going to, I mean, my first Siege Major I'll ever have gone to. And for my favorite team to not be there by such a slim margin is a big heartbreaker. Also, I mean, Sonic's my second favorite team won't be there. So that's a tough one to eat. I guess I'll just have to be a generic NA supporter. Uh, Dark Zero, Xset, Oxygen, and Astralis are the four teams going. I think all of them have a decent shot. Maybe they all have their own unique weaknesses. But I think NA stacks up pretty well to the rest of the world. I think maybe Latam might be... The other really strong looking region at the moment but we'll see if eu and latin or not latin eu and apac can uh, pull something out okay so this game in particular yeah seven five for dark zero we end up playing on oregon i did a map breakdown or rather a, a prediction for what map we'd be going to i did pick theme park which is the uh the last map that got banned out i didn't originally have oregon in one of the possibilities and then i looked back and considered things and i thought yeah oregon was a possibility so i'm glad that i retconned it in that way it did end up being oregon I felt like this favored Dark Zero, not a terrible pick for Space Station. Uh, Space Station, I think, won this map against TSM 8-6. Maybe they played it one other time, but generally they're, generally they're a pretty good Oregon team. Uh, Dark Zero lost this to Astralis, and that is Astralis, the top team in the league, but they beat Oxygen, the second best team in the league, and perhaps the best Oregon team in the league. That might be Dark Zero now, but, uh, you know, coming into this stage, I think it was probably 
thought of that it was probably thought that oxygen was the best oregon team and dark zero took him down what seven four so yeah i think definitely oregon advantaged dark zero but maybe that's just the, the map pool in general sort of slightly advantaging dark zero the space station didn't have the final pick so you know maybe if they did have the final pick between these two they would have gone theme park but that is not where we uh, decided to go maybe they should have banned Oregon over Chalet, but this is all speculation at this point. Let's get on to the round breakdown. So, Space Station gets the first round. It looked a little bit shaky at some point, but a big 3k triple kill from Hot and Cold coming out really secures the round. Three in a row for Dark Zero, Hyper going big, 3k, 2k, 3k, and then we get, we see one for Space Station, and then one more for Dark Zero. So, 4-2 attacking half for Dark Zero, not the end of the world for Space Station. Uh, it's pretty standard on Oregon. You'd, you'd probably like to get three or four, ideally, on the defense, but I think you can live with two, and you can sort of bounce back, take it over time, maybe win the game. All right, we switch sides. Space Station takes the first two rounds, and if this game continues to be very attacker-sided, uh, I guess up to this point, six of the eight rounds had gone to the attackers, then Space Station should be in the driver's seat here. They just have to keep up what's been going on. Dark Zero take around Space Station, so 5-5, five, five, back and forth kind of game. Dark Zero gets around, Space Station needs his next one to go to overtime to keep their chance of going to the Major alive, and they do not get it. Uh, Dark Zero closes it out 7-5. 50-50 community prediction. This might be the only one we've seen for the stage, and I suppose this is the most fitting one. Uh, the These two teams were neck and neck in the standings. I suppose Dark Zero had one additional point, but they were on the same number of wins and losses. This was a game just to go to the Major, and pretty evenly matched teams. I predicted Space Station mostly because I wanted them to win. I think if I was being totally objective, I would have gone Dark Zero. I think they just had a slight edge, but yeah, it, this is about perhaps maybe the most 50-50 game we did see this stage in terms of going into it. I think looking at the stats, you'd be surprised to hear that Dark Zero won this game. It looks like they lost based on the stats. A lot of uh, pretty good stat lines coming out from Space Station, their top three players. Hot and Cold pretty mid, and then Bosco extremely poor. But, right, it does sort of look like Space Station won the game just based off of this. Sky's another really good game. He's by far the best player on Space, Space Station statistically this stage. One of the top rated players in the league. Fultz uh, had a pretty mid stage. I don't think he, he did it terribly, but I don't think he had a really a pop-off game until this one. 4-0 on entry was pretty big. Rampy had a, a pretty solid stage. Hot and cold. Uh, an atrocious stage compared to all his stages last year where he was, like, top two players every stage. Uh, by far the best player uh, in 2021 season for NAL within the NAL. This is not including international play, but right within the NAL, he was easily the best player and really fell off here. And then Bosco, I mean, I don't want to belabor the point. One and nine, this is brutal. He is the IGL. He's the hard, uh, hard breach player, the hard support on defense. But, you know, one and nine, it just didn't end up cutting it. So I, I the guy's got to feel so badly. He's, he tweeted something about how he, he feels like pure shit. And yeah, I mean, I would too. And just, uh, yeah, I, God. I just, I just feel so shitty about it. I mean, this, I wanted them to win, and Bosco came up short, and um, you know he realized that he doesn't need me to tell him. But uh, yeah, it's just brutal. If if he, if he'd done better, and then maybe Hot and Cold did a little, little bit better, probably Space Station would have won this game, or at least taken it to overtime. Uh, over on Dark Zero, nobody with real pop off stats. Hyper was going crazy at the beginning of the game. He got what seven kills or eight kills or something in the first three rounds, and then he only got two or three kills after that. So he really fell off. Uh, Clips had a pretty good game, if a bit modest rating, and then and JR doing okay, Canadian and Pamazoo not doing as well, but it was Canadian at the very end of the game who sort of closed out the game. He didn't get the final kill, I don't think, but a C4 from below killed Bosco, who was planting, and then basically the game was over from there. That space station just had to do a mad dash to try to get, get the remaining kills, and they just got slaughtered in trying to do so, so yeah, just a, a brutal loss for space station, and I'm sure just the uh, a super invigorating win for Dark Zero. They probably would have liked to have taken it a little bit more decisively to save on a few gray hairs and whatnot, but they're going to the Major. Uh, you know, good for them. I'll be cheering for them against the other regions, I suppose. But, okay, we have one more game to talk about. Final game of the day, Sonics versus TSN. This looked like one of the best matchups coming into the stage, but coming into the play day, it just looked like whatever. It's the very last game of the stage, but they weren't playing for very much... Uh, Sonics did win this. They ended up getting 8th place for it, which did get them, what, like 115 SI points? That might end up being massive for them. TSM ends up getting no SI points for the stage. Ninth place. Pretty brutal for the uh, reigning world champions. This ended up being a fairly exciting game. I mean, it went to max regulation, but uh, just weirdly, weirdly close, and Sonics weirdly winning given the circumstances. So, Rexon tested positive for COVID at the last minute. So Goddess had to sub in. She didn't even have her own gear. She had to use Rexon stuff, his mouse and keyboard and whatnot. So I predicted Sonics, 
And then at the last minute when I heard that TS, or rather that Sonics were playing with Goddess, and she's not bad by any means, former pro player, but still, Rexen being the primary entry, Goddess having to sub in. Last minute, it just seemed like TSM should be able to take it, and they did not, so my prediction suffered for it. I should not have changed it. I thought long and hard. I thought, you know, Sonics, I think they could still take it, but I, well, I was weak in the end, so... Yeah, weirdly, TSM struggling, and I guess they struggled all stage, but I just thought that they would be able to at least win the game. Maybe maybe not crush Sonics, but win the game. Okay, we'll see. We'll see why Sonic really won, though. Okay, we play on Chalet, and this is the only map TSM had won on this stage. Sonics were, I think, 1-1, one one, but they were a really good Chalet team. Uh, but TSM, I guess, you know, they were feeling on it because not, not only had they not lost on it, but again, it was the only map that they won on. So that's where we end up going, and it came back to bite them. Maybe in some regard, and maybe they did the map ban before they knew that Sonics were playing with a sub. I don't know if that would have influenced them or not. Okay, so round breakdown here. First round goes to TSM. Geo gets a 3k with Clash and a 1v2 clutch. So at this point, just the air felt like maybe TSM was going to take this take this game. Uh, of course, it was a clutch in, in the first round, but it's the defense of Chalet. You only expect to get like one or two rounds, and TSM already has one on the board right away. Then Sonics get around, TSM gets around, Sonics get around, but then two more for Sonics. So 4-2 attacking half on Chalet is pretty solid. You usually want to get at least four, if not five. Three is, isn't isn't great, but they do end up getting the four. So they switch sides. Sonics get the first round. They're up 5-2. They're absolutely in the driver's seat. TSM is on the massively advantaged side, but Sonics only need to get two more to close things out. TSM gets one, and they get two. Big Chala Clutch coming out here. So TSM's only down by one round, but then Sonics make it two rounds. They're up on match point. And TSM gets one, but they do not get the get the other one. So Sonics end up winning the game seven to five. And community prediction, yeah, thirty six percent for Sonics. I, I guess maybe this has to do with the the fans and whatever. And I suppose Sonics had fewer points coming into the game with TSM having I think seven, right? And Sonics having six. I felt like Sonics were were advantaged in this game, or it looked like they were. I, I predicted them for a reason is what I'm trying to say. I felt I liked Sonic's play recently more than I did for TSM. So I feel like uh, if anyone was the favorite here, it was Sonic slightly. But I mean, not as far as the community goes. Right. Kansen and Grixer went insane. 34 kills between the two of them. 17 apiece. This has to be, I mean, maybe not some sort of record, but it's got to be close. Like the most kills between two players in a non-overtime game. Best of one. Something like that. Like just the, the sheer number of kills is incredible. The other three players only combined for 16. So, I mean, that just goes to illustrate how well they did. Achieved it really bad. He got like two of those kills in the very last round too. Bolo and Merc on the 9 and 11. I think this means that Bolo never went positive this stage. I think he had one or two games where he went even, but I never went positive. Brutal for the guy. Okay game for Geo and another good game for Chala. I think the previous game for them or maybe the game before that, he also had a pretty good game. No entry engagements. Uh, and then Super on the bottom here. That's just, you know, where he is. It is what it is. Yeti uh, just above him. Yeah, Yeti's had some brutal games this stage. And God is sort of in the middle here. So doing pretty well, all things considered, having to sub in at the last moment. 83% cost means she has the highest average cost for the entire league because she has such a high cost and only played the one game. Uh, only 8% survival rate. So she might, have, she might have the lowest survival rate in the league as well. But uh, again, Kansen and Grixer going absolutely insane. Grixer climbed his way up. I think he's top five in terms of rating for the entire league. And I think coming into the stage, you expected him there, but maybe like halfway through the stage, you definitely didn't expect any Sonics player to be up there. And I guess that pretty well does it. Uh, there is still other stuff to talk about that I meant to talk about, but saving it for the other video. And I'm going to also skip the stats. We're just going to keep this one nice and brief, as brief as I can keep it. We're going to look at the standings just to see where everyone is. So let's move over to those standings. All right, here are the standings to conclude stage number one of the 2022 season of the NAL. I'll read them off from first to 10th place. We have Astralis, Oxygen, Dark Zero, Xset, Space Station, Beast Coast, Parabellum, Sonics, TSM, and Mirage. So pretty competitive stage overall. I mean, some of the teams ended up being a little bit low in terms of points. Sonics and TSM, surprisingly so. I think Mirage and Parabellum were two of the weaker looking teams coming into the stage. And then Mirage, maybe maybe they could have got another win on the board if they weren't plagued by the issue that came about at the end of the stage with their coach having to sub in, but they also did get a win while the coach was subbing in. So uh, poor stage from them. They're going to have to need to improve in some regard. We'll see if that comes about. Parabellum were looking very promising at the beginning, and then they sort of fell off. Sonics and TSM, the two highest placing teams for NA at the Six Invitational, so they are probably the most burnt out and the most pressed for time coming into the stage. So maybe chalk their performance up to this, but if uh, if this issue continues into stage number two, then they do have a big issue. They'll likely miss out on SI 
if they have another poor stage and then maybe you know god forbid they might even have to face relegation at some point beast coast i uh, i think i had them sixth place on the power rankings but a lot of the teams above and below them were flip-flopped and whatever so not the best stage for them they at some point look like they might be going to the major and they're probably kicking themselves for missing out on going to the major even if they'd won against mirage it turns out they would not have gone but if they'd won against mirage and then they would got like one or two more points elsewhere maybe they still could have gone so uh you know not not a terrible stage a lot of people thought they might have got destroyed coming into it but uh, good for them that they sort of proved the doubters wrong and had a a pretty modest stage but showing a lot of potential space station devastating to miss out on the major in the fashion that they did and i suppose if they got more points elsewhere this wouldn't have even been a concern but yeah they lost the three points to beast coast which i suppose still would have put them below x at probably uh, the round differential would have been quite close depending on how by what margin they beat beast coast but okay you know maybe they needed that and something else but if they just beat dark zero they would have gone on the major so absolutely heartbreaker first time they're missing out on a major in like three years or something and so i think eclipse keeps his streak alive of having gone to every major including mini majors and si's and bosco is the only other player to have gone to all of them and well he's not going now x set i mean they defied all expectations maybe uh, you know they wanted to get top four and i'm sure some people expect well expected thought that they might get top four and well they ended up doing it they could have even ended up higher if they just won like one more game yeah that would have put them all the way up to second place so really big for them let's see if they can keep up this momentum Dark Zero, I'm sure that they are pleased to go to the Major. They didn't want it to be so close, but third place is nothing to sneeze at. And then Oxygen and Astralis, the two most dominant teams over the course of the stage. Oxygen is the only team that beat Astralis, but unfortunately for Oxygen, they just took losses to Dark Zero and Space Station that put them down here below Astralis on the leaderboard. But second place, still good. Good seed for the Major. We'll see how they do. And right, that's going to do it. And okay, so I will catch you guys in the next video.